the long drives, the lack of sleep, the cold mornings. I sometimes question why I put myself through this, but it's the unknown, that sense of adventure, anticipation of what might happen, and what is out there to find, and will I find it. On this particular morning, I decided to climb in the dark over a spur and drop into a valley that I had not been to for a long time. With the weather conditions the way they were, I believed that any deer in the valley would be on the opposite face, and so I set myself up to see what was around. Even the best binoculars will struggle in fog. Trying to make out objects that look like Samba is all you can do, and hope that the fog lifts before they bed up for the day. In below zero temperatures I tried to keep warm, and as the fog came and went, I managed to eventually make out the shapes I was looking for. Samba always feel more comfortable in fog. It is like a camouflage for them, and therefore they are usually happy to feed later into the morning before they bed. If you don't know your hunting area very well, without the fog lifting, most hunts in heavy fog situations usually end without seeing deer. It just gives the deer too much of an advantage to hide. Samba hunting is like this, you can only do so much to predict with your hunting knowledge, but then you still need to expect the unexpected. never ceases to amaze me of the unpredictability of Samba. Sitting there perched on a rock expecting all the deer to be on the opposite face, I was blown away when I looked down to see a stag walk out of the bush not 10 metres below me. Oblivious to my presence, this stag had worked his way feeding up the gully to where he would now need to find a bed. Having this stag on this side of the face further confirms my belief that the cold does not bother them too much, as where I was does not get much sun throughout the day. Watching an animal like this from such a close distance is truly an awesome experience. The way they move through the bush so quietly while feeding on almost everything is 
was really amazing experience to watch. Even though I kept still and quiet, as soon as I clicked the photo button to take a picture, the mere sound of the shutter caught his attention. Lucky for me, I was well camouflaged against the rock, and he lost interest pretty quickly. Although I saw other deer that morning that all appeared on the opposite face, the only deer to appear on my side of the valley was that one stag. It seemed like he was not interested in hanging with the others. And I do believe that deer with personalities like this, that take that extra step to hide away regardless of the conditions, are the ones that are more likely to make it to maturity. One early morning in November, I decided to walk in to retrieve my game camera from a well-used wallow I had been monitoring. By the signs in the wallow, it hadn't been used all that often, and it seemed like the deer had finished their active running period for the year. It was 8.15am when I decided to take the game camera down and have a look at the pictures. While I was looking at the pictures, I heard the birds, and then a stick cracking to I not believe my eyes when I looked up and I could see a massive stag smashing trees and walking straight towards me. With the closest camera to me on my phone in my pocket, I pulled it out and pressed the instant record button on the side and then slowly made my way to the ground. I placed the phone on some grass hoping that it would capture the stag and then stayed perfectly still. Stag knew I was there and slowly made his way closer. I had my bow on the ground behind me and this is where the most intense time of hunting I've ever had took place. Every time the deer would move to take a step closer to the wallow, I would move something to give myself more of a chance of taking it. The first movement was to pull up my gator on my face so he would not recognise the human form. Then wait for him to stop looking at me before I make my next move. I 
knew my bow was behind me, and if I wanted to take this deer, I would somehow need to knock an arrow and get my bow over in front of me without him leaving. I slowly made movements at the time, then waiting for him to stop staring at me before moving again. Eventually, after what seemed like an eternity, I had brought the bow over to my front where I prepared for a shot. At this stage he was almost into the vision of the camera in the grass and was only 7 to 8 metres from me. He was front on and I did not want to injure him, so I waited. He finally turned side on but there was a small tree covering his vitals. All he had to do now was step out from that tree and I could take the shot. Only one more foot. I remember telling myself can't believe this is actually going to happen. At this moment, the lightest of air currents pushed past and he put his head up and smelled me. Before I could even pull the boat back, it was over and he took off like a freight train through the bush. I could not believe after everything I went through, it was all over and he was gone. If only the game camera was still on the tree when the stag came down, it would have captured the whole thing. Right there. And he's right there. 
Oh, can you? He, he's lucky to be 10 meters from me. I smashed him. A month later I returned back to pick up the camera and was pleased to find that it had captured the stag returning to the wallow but only at night, four days after the close encounter happened. No other time did he return again.